Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are going to be restoring a spill plane. This is kind of a passion for me. I really love spill planes. They are a simple tool that was designed to make spills. These are basically the old fashioned match. So you could light one end and carry it around and light things in your house. This was designed for the curls. And if you've ever gotten into hand tool woodworking, you know the curls are just so much fun. They're different shapes, different types, different thicknesses. And this is what really makes a lot of it exciting is the different types of curls. And that's one of the reasons why I love spill planes because their only purpose is to make curls. You don't use these to make joinery. You don't use these to make any furniture. They make curls. And it's such a simple device. So today we're actually going to be going through and restoring this, sharpening it, making everything fit. It's a fairly simple piece and it's not too different from restoring a molding plane, which I might do a video on that in the future. But I wanted to go into a little bit more detail in this particular video. Now if you just want to see the laid back video where I run through it with some music playing in the background and everyone enjoys that, you can go to the main channel, Wood by Wright, and there you'll see that video. But this we're actually going to go into a little bit more detail and I can talk to what's going on in my brain and why I did things the way I did them. So let's dive in and take a look at this. Now the first thing I have to do is take this apart and look it over and make sure that everything is there. Uh, when I purchased it, I kind of did a once over on it and everything on it's pretty close. The problem is the wedge sticks out a little bit too far and the iron needs a lot of work. It's not flat, uh, the bevel is a bit crunky so I needed to grind down a bit. So we take it over to the diamond, diamond plates and to go to 10. I have a coarse, a medium, and an extra fine on my plate, but those were not fast enough, so I also have an extra, of course, that I pull out from time to time. I really only use this one when I'm grinding blades down. I had to remove a decent amount of material to get this back flat. It had uh, a decent amount of bow in it, and the last person had tipped it up. It was basically just grinding the, uh, the very edge of it. So after doing that for probably a good 15 minutes and getting it ground down, then I can take it on to the regular course, and then into the medium, and then into fine, and get it nice. Um, on the fine one, I actually had a little bit harder time um, because the, the strop is in the way. I need to do it a good bit more work on that. Uh, it was going fairly well like this, but I decided to try something a little bit different. I found that if I put my fingers out on one side and kind of supported it, I could run it back and forth like that. And I thought, hey, I wonder what would happen if I got a dowel to run it on. And that actually worked pretty well. It just allowed me to hit the, the, the whole front edge of that. Then, of course, we can strop it and make it nice and polished and shiny, and then move on to the bevel. The bevel is the same thing over again. I had to take it to the course for a good long while, the extra course for a good while. And then it was coarse, medium, and fine. And on each of these, I go in a different pattern so that I can see the scratches. I'm going to be adding a buffing compound to the strop. And if you'd like to see these, I do sell my own buffing compound and strop on my site. I don't normally check my blades by shaving hair, but it looks really good in video. And it's one of the best ways I can tell people to know exactly what sharp is. If it cuts every single hair on the first pass, then it's sharp. If it misses the hairs, it's not sharp. Go back and sharpen it again. So the next thing I need to do is mark the spoke shave and trim it down. I wanted it to, I, I don't want it sticking out the nose, I want it to back off a little bit. So I marked it with a marking knife and then I can hit with the spoke shave, take it down to that line and actually go a little past the line. And that meant I had to grind the flute down a little bit farther to match it. And uh, so I went through a, set, a series of um, rat tails to bring it to the right circumference and some of the bigger ones to move quickly through it and then some of the smaller ones to refine it. And this, this uh, curl, this uh, cove in the end of the wedge is what the curls will actually wrap around. So this actually forms the spill. So it's fairly important that it be smooth and useful. And now we can actually test this. Um, I wasn't quite sure what the sole was like. I figured at this point we could give it a little test run and see what we got. I wanted to make sure it was sticking out just a little bit. And the first pass, I was really happy. Everything came out, but they weren't very big. Uh, they were just a tiny little wisps, and so I put it down a little harder. And that's when things started to cause a little problem. The curls coming out were massively large. And uh, looking at it a little bit closer, I realized that the, the sole was not yeah, completely flat, and so I actually needed to plane the sole down nice and flat. It wasn't out by very far, so I used a rabbit plane um, to get it most of the way, and then came in and cleaned it up with a file. So you can set a square across there and make sure it's nice and flat. 
but the, the shoulder plane, rabbit plane, um, did fairly quick work of bringing it into flat, checking it back and forth until I was happy. Hit it with the uh, the files just to make everything was smooth, and then test it out. And it's tap the iron in, tap the wedge, move it back and forth until it's sticking out just a little bit. And that made things cut a little bit better. You see this is still a little bit small. And then you know, one of the problems with this one is it doesn't have a very wide cutting pattern. So three quarter inch was too wide. It needed, it was wanting something about a half inch wide, uh, but I didn't have any stock on hand for that. So after a little bit of tapping, then the curls started to come. Now, actually, those were uh, way too crunky. I went uh, too far and needed to back it off a little more. And here's where the, the curls start to come out the way I'm expecting them to. Uh, except for a couple of them getting stuck on the side. Uh, problem with the, the board being a little bit too, uh, too wide. There we go. Those are the curls I'm looking for. I knew they were coming up pretty soon. <laughs> like I'm editing this video or something. But yeah, that's basically what a spill plane would be. Uh, I normally wouldn't be making it out of walnut, uh, but whatever wood you have on hand. So, uh, yeah, um, I really enjoyed this. There's just something fun about spills that you just can't get from anything else. They're, they're intended for making the curl. And uh, if, if I were in a shop making curls all day long, I'd be happy, even if I didn't produce a single piece of furniture. And that is kind of the, the joy of a spill plane. Just looking at all the curls. Ain't they pretty? I mean, just... Yeah, I'm happy. So there you have it, a spill plane. Such an enjoyable tool, and I am just, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm excited. I love these things, and I'm looking forward to adding a few more to my collection. I think I have four of them now, and there are many more to come in the future. Now, in the main video, I said this was made of oak, and actually looking at it, I just assumed oak by looking at it, but then looking a little closer, no, this is actually made of hickory. Um, so kind of cool. I don't have any other hickory planes. Uh, so this is my first one for that. And uh, just kind of an interesting thing. One of the nice things about hickory is if you stain it, it looks a lot like oak. <laughs> so I hope you liked this video. If you did, please let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or ideas, thoughts. I'd love to hear those and I'd love to see what you're thinking as well. So uh, yeah. Uh, also, if you'd like to see me make my own spill plane, which I'm thinking about doing here soon, uh, let me know down below. They're kind of a weird thing how they have to be such a steep angle as well as such a, a skewed angle. Just kind of a, a fun plane all around. So I hope you like this. That's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day. This is a spill plane, and this is a plane spill. <laughs>